at this very moment as we talk countless animals worldwide may be taking their last breaths possibly the last of their species our earth maintains a delicate balance between flora fauna and humans creating a harmonious ecosystem sadly this balance is now tipping with a noticeable decline in plants and animals primarily due to human activities hello and welcome to krishi jagran business i am shruti savaria and this video is powered by still Today we'll discuss some of the India's rapidly declining species, explore the reasons behind their potential extinction and discover what changes we can collectively make to save these voiceless creatures. Currently there are more than 163,000 species on the IUCN red list, a comprehensive global inventory of species conservation status with more than 45,300 species threatened with extinction, including 41% of amphibians 37% of sharks and rays, 34% of conifers, 26% of mammals and 12% of birds. Since we know that so many species are becoming extinct, what steps is our government taking to save them? To find out, we spoke with the Deputy Conservator of Forests in Delhi, Mr. Mandeep Mittal. So the first thing that we do is we ensure that the forest areas are well protected. So we have our forest guards, our forest range officers, foresters, they continuously patrol the forest areas to ensure that there is no trespass. When the wild animals feel safe, then they breed and the number of wild animals increases. So the first and the foremost thing that we do is protect our forests. And the next major effort that the Department of Forests and Wildlife makes is rescue of any wild animals which are in distress. Sometimes it so happens that the wild animals stray into residential areas. Especially you would have seen that in rain, a lot of snakes are mm. uh, found in the residential areas. Then sometimes snail guys stray into residential areas. Sometimes the animals get injured, birds get injured, monkeys get injured. So the Department of Forest and Wildlife has four divisions across Delhi. Mm. And every division has its own dedicated team of forest guards, wildlife guards and animal handlers. And whenever we get any calls regarding any animal, any wild animal in distress, our teams immediately rush to the spot and then we rescue the wild animals, we treat them and when they are fully recovered we release them in the wild in the forest areas the first and the foremost initiative which has been very successful all across the country is the tree plantation drives so the forest departments all across the country are making a significant contribution to preservation of environment the way that we are doing this is we are taking degraded patches of forest land and we are planting native varieties of trees so this way we are increasing the forest cover yeah. the National forest policy of our country gives a mandate that at least one third of the area of the country should be under forest cover. And now slowly we are moving in the right direction and it is hoped that in few years we will be able to achieve that target. Hmm. Uh, there are a lot of programs which are being run all across the country. Uh, some of the programs are centered specifically around endangered species like vultures and some vultures have now become endangered because of use of a medicine called diclofenac. Okay. So diclofenac is a painkiller which earlier was commonly used uh, by dairy farmers. Okay. It was given to cattle and when the vultures would feed on the carcasses of the cattle, the diclofenac would enter into their bloodstream and eventually it would cause various diseases and the vultures would die. Okay. Now the government has banned the use of diclofenac and vulture breeding programs have been initiated at several places. There's a bird called the Great Indian Bustard yeah. that is endangered. It's found only in Rajasthan. Hmm. So there also a program has been initiated by the government for conservation of the Great Indian Bustard. Hmm. So likewise, wherever it is feasible, the government is running conservation efforts, running various programs for protecting the endangered species. So let's learn about five of these threatened species. Bengal Tiger. One of the world's largest carnivores weighing over 300 kilograms and reaching up to 3.3 meter in length, India has lost 97% of its Bengal tiger population in the last century due to poaching, urbanization, habitat loss and global warming. Snow Leopard Found in drugged mountains of Central Asia, this elusive big cat is endangered due to poaching, habitat loss, declines in natural prey species and retaliatory killing from human-wildlife conflict. Climate change also severely impacts their alpine habitat and prey availability. Black Buck Indigenous to India and Nepal, this elegant antelope faces threats from habitat loss, hunting and competition with livestock for grazing lands. Agricultural expansion has significantly reduced their natural grassland habitats. One-horned Indian rhinoceros, the largest of the rhino species, 
faces threats from poaching and habitat loss. Illegal trade of rhino horn has increased sharply since 2007, remaining a major factor in their endangered status. Great Indian Bustard Occurring on the Indian subcontinent with less than 150 individuals left in the wild, this critically endangered bird faces decline due to habitat loss, anthropogenic disturbances due to breeding season and frequent poaching. Mr. Mittal also shared the steps we can take to prevent species from becoming extinct. If they see any wild animal in distress, they must immediately inform the forest department so that our teams can go and rescue the animal. One more very important message that I would like to give to your viewers is that whenever they see animals like snakes mm -hmm. or monitor lizards, they should not panic. Sometimes there have been cases where people on seeing a snake, they panic and they kill the animal. They should never do that. They should just stay away from a wild animal. If a wild animal does not feel threatened, it would normally not attack the humans. There have been cases of leopards straying into residential areas. So in such cases, people should just keep a safe distance from the wild animals and immediately inform the local authorities. They can inform the police, they can inform the forest department and then we can go and rescue the wild animals. That is one aspect. And the other very important aspect that I would like to discuss is that people should be conscious of the choices that they make. They should adopt a lifestyle where their impact on the environment is lesser. We should try to reduce the pollution that we cause. The ways that we can do is do these things is, first of all, we should reduce our usage of plastic. We should, at all costs, avoid single-use plastic. We should conserve energy. We should use minimum amount of electricity that we can use. We should prefer taking public transportation as compared to private vehicles. If we start making these small conscious decisions, if we start changing our lifestyle, then it will certainly have a very positive impact on the climate, on the nature, on the environment. A lot of myths are perpetrated by people saying that if you take this medicine made of bones of animals or if you take scales of this animal, it would help you regain vitality, it would cure diseases, but most of these are just myths. Mm -hmm. So people should at all costs avoid using wildlife articles. It's not only illegal, but morally also it is wrong. Remember, every action comes. By working together, we can make a significant difference in protecting India's rich biodiversity and ensuring these magnificent creatures survive for generations to come. This is Shruti Savarya signing off. If you found this video informative, please like, share and subscribe to our channel Krishi Jagran Business.